And we're live here on Facebook. I'd like to welcome those listening in podcast land. And also, I'd like to welcome my buddy Rich. Rich, how you doing today? I'm doing good, Mike. And uh, also welcome to those uh, watching us or listening to us on uh, on YouTube. Um, so, yeah. So, another hot week uh, for me down here in the Quad Cities. But got through it. Work... Um, amended our dress code as we got to wear shorts this week uh being out in the warehouse which was nice not sure if it'll be a permanent change or if they'll uh but you got to take the take the exception and take advantage of it while 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 it's allowed 100 so, uh, yeah and uh two short weeks coming up yeah so as i'll be yeah i'll be off wednesday and then we get uh the fourth the fourth off as well yeah i Man, I'm looking forward to this week. Uh, it'll be nice to, to get the fourth off. We've got a few things going on uh, this week at work. Get through this day, week of work. Have a four, have a three-day weekend. Get some Whitey's ice cream while I'm there. Cool, and, cool. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Rich, uh, we got some things to talk about this week. Um, we have the NASCAR Corner. As always, tri- presented by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois. Uh, we also are going to do some. Uh, we're going to give you our NBA all-time NBA team. We are going to pick our own teams. I want to hear what you people think. Please share and comment and do all the things, uh, and uh, do all the things. And, and let us know how controversial it is where we put certain people and who we left off. We want to hear from you. I hope this segment goes viral. I'm going to make it a clip. We're going to make it a clip, and we're just going to share it everywhere. Um, so. Okay. Um, uh, but the only thing you, you didn't hit on, Mike, was uh, Cubs baseball. So, uh, like we always talk about, Mike, and, of course, the, uh, the Stanley Cup Finals. Yeah, that are going on. So uh, all that and more, Mike. But what do we got to do first? Um, I think we should roll the intro. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa. This is Balls and Sticks, the podcast, with your hosts Mike and Rich. And we're back. Okay, Rich. Um, so, before we do anything, let's talk about the poll question this week. Uh, last week's poll question was, Go Cubs Go, Bear Down, and the Super Bowl Shuffle. Hard pick for me. I, I voted the the only one I've gotten to do live. Okay. That's why I what voted do you mean for by it. the only one I've gotten to do live. Well, um, I I was born in 85, so the Super Bowl shuffle for me was not a never got to really experience that live as a thing. Nothing like mm-hmm. I, I wasn't I know it. I enjoy it. It's fine, but I was not privy to it. Uh, I've never been to a Bears game. Not having been to a Bears game, I've never gotten to sing Bear Down, Chicago Bears, Bear Down. So that leaves only one, Rich. I voted for Go Cubs Go because I've gotten to sing it at a game in response to the Cubs winning. Yeah, that, that's what I went with, too, and I have the same feelings with the Super Bowl shuffle. I mean, I was three years old when that came out. Yeah. So yeah. I, I really don't have a connection. I mean, when the Bears went to the Super Bowl and got embarrassed by the Colts, they, the year is escaping me. They, they tried oh, to kind six. of remake it. They tried to re, kind of remake it, but it really didn't catch on. And even though that stretch of – that 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 stretch of years, where oh, six oh seven years. So it was in oh seven when they got decimated. Okay. 
Yeah, and I mean that for me that's when the kind of like bear down became a thing for us because I mean how that's that's kind of when our friendship really grew was in that year hanging out with uh, the young adult group uh, from Heritage Church watching bears having parties watching getting together watch bears games I mean I don't yeah. think we ever like saying bear down but I mean the bears were good so you got to hear the song a lot because they actually put points on the board yeah yeah and we're winning football games but it's but still for me it's it's got to be go guts go out of those three. I've been there. I've sang it. I've been to Milwaukee and sang it while it wasn't being played multiple times. As you're walking down the concourse to leave the stadium, yeah, with other fans. By the way, I would I would also argue I didn't just sing it. I led it at the time. <laughs> my my uh, my bravado allowed me to uh, make it known throughout the land what was happening, and that was that the Cubs won. Yep. All right. So this week, um, we're going to go other baseball songs that get played at baseball stadiums that have going into the second round. So that'll be Cleveland Rocks, I Love L.A., and Deep in the Heart of Texas. Deep. I've gotten to sing that one live at a Astros game. You did? Yep. Yep. A home game for the Astros, by the way, in Milwaukee. Yep. To which we then right. then got to sing Go Cubs Go. Two songs in one in one day. It was great. Okay. Rich, do you see what's coming up next? Um I do, Mike. What, is it a left turn? It is a left turn. And after that? Probably another left hand turn. Because we're heading into the NASCAR corner, presented by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. Fifth Avenue Moline. Check them out in person for all your sports memorabilia needs or at their eBay store. Once again, that is Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. So, nothing to cover from last week. Last The last uh, race was two weeks ago. Uh, they gave all the, the fathers uh, the day off for Father's Day. And so now, I, I mean, isn't the old story uh, the, the only way that you can become an, a, a uh, a driver in sports uh, or a, a professional uh, race car driver is you got to be your dad's best friend. Probably. Heard yeah. that. There seems to be a lot of juniors and. Yeah, you got to be your dad's best friend. And in order to be your dad's best friend, I mean, you got to have the day off to celebrate your dad. So, yeah. I mean, I should be a NASCAR driver then. Um, so, uh, we are heading into uh, Nashville this week. Yeah. And uh, Rich, kind of a short track, right? Yeah, I, it's short track. It's on concrete. So that's probably about all I really know about the track. Um, so yeah, so you gotta you gotta tune up. Make sure to tune into NBC. That's where this race is gonna be on. If you're on Fox, you're probably not gonna see NASCAR on the TV. Um, so sad. make sure to over to NBC. Uh, so, Mike, you're up 12 to 6. Yep. You're quite a, you're, so you have the honor. So even though we made our picks before going live, so tell the folks who you're picking. Uh, I am going to pick Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson's a good pick. He won the race last year. Um, he'll be in my fantasy NASCAR lineup, but... I'm, that wasn't the guy that I had my eye on before you made the pick. Um, I'm going to go with Ross Chastain. Trackhouse has been really hot right now, and Chastain came in second in that race last year. Yeah. So there really isn't much track history to go off of with Nashville. Chastain came in and second in that race last year. I mean, Kyle Larson and Hendricks has kind of been struggling lately for some, for whatever reason as well. So I've wouldn't so that that was the other reason why I wouldn't have gone with Larson myself. Okay. But I still think he's a good pick. Well, um so we are uh besides that, um we now know the rumors have been laid aside. We know where uh Mart what's gonna happen with Martin Truex Jr. People thought he might retire. We even discussed it on the show mm -hmm. that he had a good run. It could have been a good time for him to retire. He chose not to. Rich, what's he going to do with himself? 
he is going to come back and still be the driver of the number 19 Joe Gibbs racing machine. Yeah. So he'll be back next year. Yep. So uh, still, no, still no word on where Kyle where, where Kyle Busch could go. Joe Gibbs really hasn't come out and said much. Um, the only thing Kyle has really said is that that's up to Mr. Gibbs. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to him. Yeah. So, uh, Rich, I do have to interject real quick. Uh, we did okay. have a uh, we do have a live show shout out. Ooh. Alex Lutzinger uh, asked if the show is live. Yes, sir, it is. Uh, I made a comment. Uh, I replied to your comment saying yes, it is, and I'm acknowledging it on the air. If you want to get a comment on the air, check us out on facebookcom sticks. Follow us there, where so you can get the notifications to know when we go live and talk about sports. Um, and if you want to join in the conversation, make comments. We are here to hear about it. Uh, if it's appropriate, we'll bring you in on the conversation. Um, excited to see Joe Gibbs staying, uh, keeping Martin Truex Jr. We're still waiting to hear, like you said, what's going to happen with Kyle Busch. So. Yeah, and um, the other news, driver news, uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is going to be back with uh, uh, Doherty. Nice. With JGR. Yeah, not JG. I don't know. He's going to be back uh, piloting the number 47. So he, he's signed on for another year. Okay. So, uh, Rich, you ready to uh, leave the NASCAR corner? Presented by always, as always, by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois, Fifth Avenue. Check them out for all your sports memorabilia needs. Or uh, check them out on their eBay store. So... Um, Alex again, or Alex re replied to our, our NASCAR corner saying that Kyle Busch is, has been a pretty damn good driver. He, yeah, yeah. he's been driving he pretty damn good this rep. year. He just, he has a bad route. He has been driving he's quite well this year, but he, he can't, he doesn't seem to be finishing it off. Um, yeah. Uh, he, apparently he's a Ryan Blaney fan. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, let's keep making left turns. Let's talk baseball as uh, the Cubs went two and four show to show. Oh, Rich, that hurts. I mean, that's what they've been doing. It is June. We are heading into the June swoon uh, as we've talked about. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we – it's – Ah oh, man, they um, they're playing right now against the Cardinals. Uh, I don't know. I I haven't looked. I think I might be. I don't. Yeah, I haven't looked at the score yet. Let me. Um, it is three to nothing, bottom of the ninth. Okay. But today's game will not go into our prediction for a show to show record. Hang on, Rich. Um, I need to. Uh, do the proper thing when you hear how badly the Cubs are losing to the Cardinals right now. Oh, yeah. Is, is that a... If they're winning. Are they in St. Louis? Yes. They oh, are. I thought they were in Chicago. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Hey, the Cubs are winning. You know what you do when the Cubs are winning? <laughs> take a drink. You take two drinks when the Cubs are winning. You only take one okay. when they're losing. See, there we go. I made it work. All right. Yeah, they are winning right now. Okay, that works. Um, so, so, Mike, I, I got it right. Yeah. Going with two wins. You, you said you were the, you were hoping, hope, hopeful and went with three wins. Yeah, so I'm done two, being hopeful. Record. They're still in fourth place in the division, barely above the Reds, who they get to play this week. Yeah. But they're still 26 and 44 overall. Yeah. Oh, man. That's rough. Um, All right. So this week, Mike, they got to play the Cardinals in St. Louis. They come home to face the Reds before starting a July 4th weekend homestand with the Red Sox. Okay. How many wins are you going to give them this week, Mike? One. One. Okay. I don't see them getting any more than one. I'm going to give them two. Mostly because it, it, it's you the bumped, red. You so bumped it up on the thing. You're not going to take the full three? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I must have 
staring at one thing, saying another. Yeah, I'm going to go three. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm okay. I'm I, I wouldn't blame you for only going two, but. I'm, I'm going to go three. I don't want to sound like a broken record every week saying two wins. Um, so I'm going to go for three. They're playing. They're, they got a rivalry games. They got rivalry games against the Cardinals and Reds, and they want. I think I. I'd like to think that they want to avoid being in last place in the division. Yeah. And so. By the way, Rich. Wins against the Reds. Can I point out that if we did the show tomorrow, I would have been correct. If, yes, you would. If if where they are right now st- stands. Anyway. Okay. So we were both right. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll go with both right, assuming that the Cardinals don't come back. Knock on wood. Which is a big if. Which is a big if. You never know. Okay. With the way this team plays. So, Rich, uh, th- any other notes with the MLB? No, not, not that I can think of. Rich, are you, are you ready to talk about the big court case that we got to talk about? Sure. Not blowing up social media. Not that one. Folks, we're not talking that court case. We are talking the NFL, Deshaun Watson, settled 20 of 24 court cases. Yeah. Nobody knows how much, what the settlements are for. Yep. I'm sure that was a condition of the settlement, is yeah. that the plaintiffs would not disclose how much they settled for. Yeah. Um, there's still four out there, and the one, um, the one person that has gone public with her is one of the four that has decided not to settle yet. Yeah, I who. And through all this, Deshaun Watson continues to be in mini camp and practicing with the team. At what point do they put him on the commissioner exempt list? Like, why? Why has that not happened yet? I don't know. I would have thought he would have went on the commissioner's exempt list last year. Yeah. I mean, he didn't play at all last year. He sat on the bench and collected money. Like, all he He did, literally. He wasn't even on the bench. Literally, all he he did last year was collect money from the Texans. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you sit there and just continue to collect money from from the Texans and not do anything? And then get because then get a payout, then get a then get a uh, a contract that makes you ridiculously overpaid. Because he is still holding firm that I didn't do nothing wrong. I'm totally innocent. This is I just want to clear my name. Okay, but legit, like I don't think there's any good to come of this. Like the leagues with the. I, uh, that plus the fact that the commissioner had to go before Congress this week and talk about the Dan Snyder situation and what to do about the Washington football commanders. commanders. Football commanders. Like, at least he, he, he claimed. Uh, so. I'm talking a whole bunch of stuff with the commission. I'm, I'm doing a bunch of commissioner stuff right now. Sorry, Rich. I'm, I'm kind of going off on a tangent. So no, he claimed fine. he didn't have the right to remove a, a owner. But yet, he does have the... the owners, though. He does have the right to put a player on, an, on his exempt list. Or... Now, with the latest negotiation there, so I, I did find out some of what's going on. Uh, have you heard how the negotiate, how the how the uh, the suspensions and all that are handled now? That's actually a new part of, part of the new latest CBA. They, and I believe they don't they have a third party like arbiter that they can take their case to. Yep, exactly. They take their appeal to, so it's not an appeal going to the commissioner. It is an independent. No, 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 no. Or, that person hears the case, makes a ruling, the commissioner hears the appeal and or 
can tweak the ruling. Um, but because that person hasn't finished their investigation and has not made their decision made, there's nothing being done. I think while the investigation is going on, the best thing to do is put him on the exempt list, correct? Yeah. I, I mean, let's, let's be honest with ourselves. Houston was nice about it and let the commissioner not have to make that decision. Are the Browns going to be that nice? For the most part, Mike, I'm wondering what the Browns are gaining by having Deshaun Watson in the building on the field leading the leading the offense. Because they know they've got to know in the back of their mind that he's going to be gone. He's going to be suspended for the year. I, and by the time he gets back, it let's assume it, it is just one year which it probably should be more, but it's probably going to at least be a year. Yeah. Yeah. What? So I would be giving every type of rep that you can give the Jacoby Brissett that you can because you got to, because because you mishandled Baker Mayfield, you know he's not going to be. New phone, who this? He's not going to be in there. New phone, who this? That's, if I'm Baker, that's what I'm doing. I, man. The Browns have made this – they've lived up to their names and they've crapped the bed. Yeah. So, overall, um, that helps. Oh. Do, do you think it helps or does it hurt the um, – um, Does do you think it helps or hurts the – uh, the the his case with the league that he settled these. Hmm. It could speed up the investigation process if all these things are closed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If if these games are if all these cases are are settled because you don't necessarily have to wait await the results of a civil case and what the what comes out of the civil case now i would think he has to he has to settle all of the cases before you can make that ju- judgment right yeah i would that's what i got that's what i'm almost thinking and do you think with his contract being structured that he gets paid 1 million dollars for this season that even one, a one year suspension is is a fair is a fair suspension because <sighs> that's not hitting him in his pocketbook because his contract got so back loaded uh, how and about they structured the uh, contract to, thinking here, that he was going to be out this year. here's the real question how about if they if what they do is pick uh take the the um take the suspended the, a year and it's and you give over x amount of dollars yeah a 10 million dollar fine make it 20 million that way you can arbitrate down to 10 is that a fair like at what point does is any of it fair I don't think it is. is I, I really don't think anybody's going to come out being happy with this. Yeah. I, I, I mean, if it's a year, if it's a, if it's less than a year, that shows that they're caring more about a player gambling while he's not actively playing and potentially. Then they do about. Then they do about. It, it, then they care Sexual about, misconduct by one yeah, of their players. Sexual misconduct. I, yeah, it's it's a it's a farce. Um, the way the the league has handled it, the way the Browns have handled it. By the way, you know who the best team to come out, the best people to come out of this in general is Houston. Houston. They, they say we don't we don't want this guy. Picks. We we know that he is a potential to be a a a team changing quarterback. 
But we don't want him on our team. We don't agree with what he's done. That's what they've said to the to to their fan base. I good on him. They and they got the draft picks and if he gets suspended the rest of this year, guess what? They still get to keep everything they got. They get to keep it. Yeah, I oh man. They've already said trade's the trade, it's done. Yeah. You can't so, undo it. We're not going to give you anything back. I yeah, I'm more than and I again, I don't think that Houston is is comes out clean on this. I think they still with some of what they've done are going to be hurt by a lot of these things, but man, am I happy to see uh I think that they they're the ones that so far are coming out the best. So, okay, Rich. Um we have some breaking news. A reporter in the field. Mhm. Alex Lutzinger informs us that Tampa Bay won, just won the game tonight, bringing the series three to two. Are you scared yet? No, not yet. Not yet. Just so everybody knows, in the Stanley Cup playoffs or finals, Rich has taken the Avalanche, and I have taken the Lightning. Hopefully, I get free food Monday or next uh, Saturday. I mean, I'll get free food anyway, but. I don't know that they, they. I don't. No, I'm one, getting free food because one of thirty-six. One of thirty-six. Yeah. Only one team in the past thirty-six finals have come back from a three-one deficit. Yeah, but the Lightning are one of the like the Lightning have been and continue to be one of the greatest teams we've seen in years. And they're consistently good, right? Like they are. I no, I'm good. Oh man, okay, Rich, are you ready? To piss people off. I don't know. I don't think it'll be piss people off. Oh, I um, am. As I'm sure as my... As long as we're alive, Mike, the Cubs did win. Oh, well, yes. The Cubs did win. So you, you got it right. Going I did get it right. Throw three wins. All right. So I, I, don't know about, I don't know about upset or piss people off over who we may have left off or not left off. Um, our all-time NBA team... We chose to do top 12. Okay. so Because that's how many players you can have on an active NBA roster. Yeah. Yeah. I love this. This is this was a great call by you to, to say let's do an active roster. Um, so, Rich, we're, are we doing position? I did mostly positionless. Uh, I have them ranked. I actually ranked them in my order, I believe. Yeah, I, and that's I, yeah, where I'm going to tick I'm people off. I'm comfortable having them in this order. Would the top five players be in my starting lineup? I'm not quite sure on that. I can probably figure that out once we go one through twelve. Who's going to be on that team, though? Okay, so Rich, number one all time, your your first draft. Like if you get to pick every guy, and it's not a draft, so you get to just pick each any any guy individually. Your number one pick overall. I'm going to have to go with Michael Jordan. Agreed. Uh, my number one is MJ. And I've gotten to see him play, both live and on TV. Never seen. You didn't get to go I, to the, in, any of the uh, stuff in the uh, at the mark? I did not. Okay. I think I saw him. No, I, I don't remember. I think I did go to one of the NBA exhibition games at the mark. I don't remember who played. But, I, I mean, I remember that the Bulls came here, but I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure MJ I, played in that game. I remember we're seeing. We're going to say that he did. Okay. So, number two I have is Kobe Bryant. That's where I put, I put Kobe here, too. Great. Much like Michael Jordan, a good scorer. He could dominate. A, a, an entire basketball game, and he played defense too. Okay, with no slouch on defense. You ready for me to tick people off? Go for it. Number three, Larry Bird. All right, I, I like I like Larry Bird. Um, I have him at number four. This is where I put LeBron. Now nah, LeBron doesn't deserve it. Larry Bird did more for the game in the eighties than LeBron has done in the last 10 years. Yeah. 20 years. Okay. He's got career longevity, and he's still 
He's still playing. He's still making rec. He's still going going records. I'm not ready you to right. put him above Kobe. Kobe, and he's probably in my mind, he's never going to be better than Jordan. You're right. But he, he's still a great, great player. He's probably going to go down as one of the greatest of all time. For Larry Bird, that I put him at number four. The one thing that keeps on coming up on my like my Facebook feed every once in a while is like like Larry. It's like the like a story of Larry Bird playing the Utah Jazz. Going by the bench and saying, you know, fellas, I feel like 53 tonight. Yep. Midway through the third quarter, he scores 53 points, goes over to the bench, checks himself out, done for the night. Yep. I mean, how is that not what the greatest story of NBA ever? Okay, you ready for me to really tick people off? Go for it, Mike. Who you have a number, number four? Four, Steph Curry. I got Steph a little bit below some other people, so I'll I'll get the Steph. I'll get the L- Steph where I have Steph a little bit later. Um, so explain why, Mike. Steph. So what Kobe did for the three was make people think, man, great guys can do the three. What Steph has done for the three is make everybody believe they can shoot a three. He's changed the game, and he's had a coach that believed in him and allowed him to do it in a way that has changed the way the game is played in the NBA, in college, in high school, in peewee. Everybody's going for the threes. Yeah, a lot of people think that's destroying the game, but you know what? Three is greater than two. And if I can score three every time I go down and you only score two every time you go down, I'm going to win. All right. So, Mike, who do you have at number five? Magic Johnson. All right. Um, my number five spot, I went with uh, the Diesel, Shaquille O'Neal. Man. Just a, just a dominant yeah. interior presence, both both in the paint. That's he, a, was hard, he was hard to defend. Good spot for him. Good spot for him. I actually put him... At number six. All right. Number six is where I have Magic Johnson. Okay. Okay. Um, We're not that far off on Magic. Magic and Shaq, we we just flip-flopped them. That's all we did. That's okay. Um, And I like that. Magic. Magic was magic. Like, watching him, it was was better than watching Magicians because you just didn't understand it. He was great. He was awesome. He was that Shaq Shaq came into the league like everybody talks about how LeBron is big and tall and powerful Kobe or Shaq came into the league and everybody's like this seven foot two dude and he's big and he the league didn't know what to do with him I yeah I totally uh, yeah that 5-6 range, that's a great spot for him. Um, he, he's my first guy off the bench, if you will. Okay. Well, we'll get into what, from that team, what our starting lineup will be after mm-hmm. we get through all 12. So, so put that on the back burner. Be thinking who would be in that starting lineup once we get there. Uh, number seven is where I am, Steph Curry. Okay. Okay, I don't maybe, blame maybe you for I that. Him, maybe I have him a little lower. but I think that's low. I, but I get your... I get your point about how he's changed the game. I mean, making the three-point shot such a big part of the modern of the modern NBA. Yeah. Um, but but for me, I, I think I, I prefer I think Magic and Magic and Shaq and LeBron. When when comparing our lists, are just a little bit uh, above Steph Curry. That's all. Yeah. Um. Number seven is where I'm going to put LeBron. All right. I, I still think you got LeBron a little bit too low, but, but you've, you've explained, I mean, why you have stuff that, that much higher. Okay. And Here's the deal. Really, if, really the, if you, in a one, on, it, let's, let's even screw the one-on-one game in a team game. If Shaq is defending LeBron, who wins in that night? I don't think, you, you let him play in the 90s rules. 
I don't think LeBron can handle what Shaq has for him. LeBron relies on the way the current game is and the fact that he has the size to intimidate people when he comes comes in. How are you intimidating Shaq? That's why Shaq's above him. Okay. Now, Magic. I think Magic actually, in today's game, would make LeBron look like a little baby. I don't know about a little baby, but I mean they're they're similar in in their primes they probably would be a similar build. Yeah. Okay. And then uh Bird and Steph, I've made the argument for Steph, Bird. I mean, come on. Personally, I think Bird is is the most underrated player in NBA history. Well, I think he, he's got the respect, and I wouldn't call him underrated, but when everybody's talking about the greatest players of all time, he's kind of gotten lost in the shuffle. Okay. Everything is so much about Michael and LeBron. You're right. Better. I don't think he's underrated. I think he's probably adequate, adequately rated, but I think he's under... Appreciated? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I could see totally see underappreciated. So that's why I have those. Him. That's why I have those. And then you have Michael and Kobe. Sorry, those two are one yeah. and two. LeBron has a lot of work to do. Steph, honestly, I think could catch. It could could be on the heels of Kobe before he's done, if he decides to keep going. I I would not be surprised. Okay, let's go with our number eight pick. Uh, I don't think. We both agree on this one, and I think this is the perfect place to put him, if nothing more, because this guy is – he's a record holder. During, yeah, Will Chamberlain. He dominated in his era of basketball. Yeah, just domination. I mean, it, it was a – I mean, it was a – the era that he played in, he averaged over 50 points a game. But that was also an era where you – got the ball into your big man and then once he touched the ball it was either going into the hoop or he missed his shot and the other team got the ball back and was yep. going the other way it wasn't the big man didn't pass once the big man got the ball he wasn't going to give it up unless he's putting it in the in the hole yeah Un- so that's why i i went with will chamber yeah. there i mean for I, me, I mean 100 points all you have to say is he scored yeah. 100 points without shooting a single three by the way yeah, and, and this is where I, I kind of struggled with Wilt Chamberlain because, I mean, I- if you're wanting to put another center, like center on your roster, this is where I was almost struggling. All right, do I put Hakeem Olajuwon, the dream, or even Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on there? By the way, in order for him to score 100 points, if he does it two points at a time, he has to do it almost 10 he has to make 10 more shots just to make his 100 points over somebody making all threes. That's a that's that's crazy. Got to make right, Mike. It is. Yeah. No, I'm wrong. You got to make 15 more shots. Sorry, 15 more shots. With no three-pointers? With no three-pointers. Hmm. 15 extra shots. Half as many shots as a three po- as if you made made it all through threes. And yet nobody can do it yet. Okay, let's move on from number eight, move into nine. Who you got there, Rich? Um, this is where I put Bill Russell, all-time leader in NBA championships with yep. nine um uh, 11 11 sorry yeah 11 11 great nice catch there mike nice catch um i mean he was a good team team guy i mean he yeah. could get you double digit rebounds chime in with 17 points and i mean he was the leader of the boston celtics team but 
he didn't necessarily do it on the offensive end. So he's a good team player. And yeah. if you're constructing a, a team, you got to have a guy like that that's willing to do the dirty work and not worry about what his stat line looks like. Guess what? My number nine is the exact same team. for all the same reasons. Number 10. Dennis Rodman, the greatest defensive player you and I have seen play in our lifetime. Period. You got to put him in there. Number 10. All right. I I didn't it, – it's a good argument. If you're constructing it as a team, you got to have a guy like Dennis Rodman on your team. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't I I didn't think of Dennis Rodman even in the just missed the cut list to be if I'm being honest with you Mike wow. you can even see my yeah I, I see it cut list. I see it um, and I agree and I, yeah two of those guys are guys, three of those guys are guys that I think should be on the list four of the all the yeah, every one of them all of them deserve to be on the list yeah so uh, number ten I I went with uh, Oscar Robinson yeah the yep. guy that made Mr. Triple Double before Russell Westbrook was even playing the game, or probably even born. Yeah. Great, great all around player. So, yeah, Oscar Robinson. Um, number 11 for me, Mike, was uh, the big fundamental, Tim Duncan. Man, that, ooh, that's a, that's a good one. I, I can't, I can't argue against it, but what I can, say is that's where i put oscar robinson okay so yeah uh right, number mike. 12 the last spot on your bench who you got this is where i put kevin durant okay i like that pick i he actually was there for me uh you you saw me put it together right live on air i had him at number 11 and then i had ad at Number 12, I took both those guys off for Oscar. And for my number 12 pick, the logo. Yeah. You, there was a reason that the NBA made, made him the logo. 100%. Got to be the logo. All now, right. he's arguing that Kobe should be the new logo. That's fine. But you are the logo, Jerry West. I, yeah. Okay, we also picked a head coach. Rich, who is your head coach of this team? I'm going to go with uh, Red Arbach, legendary coach of the Boston Celtics. Rich, I'm going to show I'm going to I'm going to take I'm going to tell you how I'm a, how I'm going to tell you. I'm going to show you how I picked uh, the guy I picked. Okay, you ready? Okay. Um, sure. <laughs> Um, the Zen master himself, Phil Jackson. All right. I still have Phil Jackson on my bench. He's the, he's the lead assistant on my team. Okay. I guess. And the reason why I went with Arbach over Phil Jackson, I mean, Red Arbach, had no assistant coaches. Yeah, no assistant coaches and still guided the Boston Celtics to all those championships. Yeah, no but coaches. Phil Jackson had assistant coaches, but he didn't bring them with him everywhere. He had different guys that ended up going different places. And, uh, I mean, he had two teams that were dominant in their eras. Lakers and both. Um, Tex Winter was one guy that was that's true a fixture on yeah. his on his staff in both L. A. and Miami, L. A. and uh, Chicago. Though. Okay, Tex one Winter. Uh, my my lead assistant head coach is going to be Steve Kerr. Yeah, I, I went with Steve Kerr. My I went with Steve Kerr on the bench as well. Okay. Um, and then finish and out your, your list, Rich. But my last coach on the bench is going to be Pat Riley. Somebody needs to 
somebody needs to be a good defensive coach. And uh, yep, I keep, picked keep Pat Riley. Play defense. Keep them. Keep them honest on the defense end. Um, and then I picked kind of a wild card. Apparently, I picked okay. Greg Popovich. Greg Popovich is a great coach, but for me, with the problems that he had being the coach of the Dream Team, not being able to get those guys to the gold medal, kind of tell that's why I left Pop off my list and why I put a Popovich disciple okay. in Steve Kerr on the bench in his, instead, yep. instead yep. of Pop. Um, some honorable mentions, I think we both agree, Akeem Olajuwon, uh, Jason Kidd, Charles Barkley, uh, all are guys that I think Charles, honestly, there were guys that were on my list that I took off that I think Charles is better than and actually deserves to be the 13th man. Uh, I would yeah, pick the mailman, Carl Malone. Yeah, Carl Malone, uh, Scotty Pippen, uh, uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. And f- yeah, and then you you have Jerry as you, one of your uh, honorable West, yeah. I would I would say uh, KD is one of mine, and then uh, um, yeah, I mean the biggest part, the kind of like the hardest thing that I had when putting together this this top twelve was not having the entire team be guys that. I'm more familiar with and saw play like from the oh yeah late late nineties into the two thousands when I stopped caring about basketball. Yep. That's what was hard for me. So being I wanted to put Hakeem on, on the team, but you couldn't argue what Wilt Chamberlain and Oscar Robinson and Oscar Robinson did over the course of their careers, even though they played well before I started following basketball or even before I was born. And if you're looking at this from a team perspective, I mean, we, we mentioned that you got guys on the team like Bill Russell and Dennis Rodman, guys that you could depend on to put the team first and not care about their individual stats. Throughout both of our teams, do we have like a prototypical textbook point guard that's there to distribute the offense? and keep everybody involved and that was actually my next point my one honorable mention that you don't have on your list that i was going to bring up john stockton yeah like and and you just brought it up we don't have a pro a, a prototypical points guard point guard that's what you need john stockton for yeah for me that that's where jason kidd came in all right yeah bump one of these off the list to put Jason Kidd on the list because I mean so Rich, Jeff Curry, Curry I'm gonna, and Magic Johnson are point guards, but they're also good scoring. I'm going to call you out on it. Who okay. are you picking for your top, your starting lineup? Oh man, the starting lineup. Even though they both play shooting guard, I, I go with Michael and Kobe. Okay. One of them is going to have to play small forward. Yeah, play, that's fine. Play outside of their position. And play small forward. Ooh, I'm gonna go with the big. I'm gonna go with the diesel in the five. So your center. Yeah. I'm gonna go Duncan at power forward. And probably go Larry Legend, having to play out of position. No. Yeah, that that's it. Larry's gonna be the first one off the bench. Okay, I'm gonna pick MJ. Yeah. No, Larry would have been your five. One, two. Yeah, Larry would have been four. your four. And Tim Duncan. Yeah, that that's your five. I'm going to go Michael, Kobe. Okay, yep, you're right. Kobe out of position. Dennis Rodman. Steph Curry. And Magic Johnson. So, so. You're gonna have to list that one out for me real quick. Okay, Michael, as okay as my shooting guard. Okay. Kobe as my small forward. All right. Uh. Hmm. 
So you're putting Magic Johnson Dent, at the point? Yeah, Johnson at point. Rodman at center. All right. And Steph Curry. You're playing small ball there, Mike. <laughs> really small. You're playing really small. No. Yeah, you think. And you're right. I don't have a guy that – but but how many times did Dennis go against Shaq yeah, and yeah. box I, him I, out? I'm not arguing where, 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 where you're going with uh, – with Robin play, playing center, he, he can take the jump ball. He can play the bigger guys. Yep. Um, but you got Magic at six, 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 seven, six, eight. I'm okay with it. You still got Steph that can shoot a three all day, all day. He ain't. He'll he'll drain them for you. Michael's gonna take it inside. Kobe can do that mid range. Magic just lights it up. And Dennis gets all the rebounds. All right. That, that's fair. I mean, small ball at his best, but that's what the NBA has turned into. Yeah. You might have a center on your roster and he might start the game, but when the game's on the line, you put the five best players. You put your five best players out on the floor, even if that means you got a guy that normally is playing power forward in it in its center, like an undersized center, like uh, like that's what kind of what the the Warriors do with Draymond Green. They'll put yeah. him at put him at center and let him defend and surround the rest of the floor with shooters. Yeah, I I just I can't believe. Um... Yeah, it's, I like what you said. I like a lot of what uh, what your points are, um, but uh, yeah, I man, it's just it's weird to look at where the game has come, and and yeah, you would call mine small ball back in the '90s. You would, I I admit it, um, but I still think that it's overall a better team. By the way, neither one of us put LeBron in our serving lineup. No, we didn't. I thought about we do I for me it was between Larry Larry and LeBron for the final spot in the starting lineup. Nope. I never That's just me. I never That's put either me. of them in there cuz I think I think Magic is a better all-around player. I I personally do. And then you got MJ like yeah. Okay. Uh, one of these years, one of these days, when we have a guest in here, we'll have to do like a draft, like, and just do like a. Maybe we'll do a. Maybe maybe. Speaking of drafts, we got to start talking fantasy. We I know it's Ju- we're at the end of June, but we got to start talking about fantasy football. Here soon, not that we like. We want you to. We want our fans to be a part of that. But that'll be in after the quick hit. We'll do that as a quick hit. Okay, any other okay. NBA stuff you want to talk about, or shall we go to quick hits? Not really. The NBA, we really didn't. The NBA draft was Thursday. I didn't recognize any of the guys that were selected. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, well, no, I, I recognize one of them. Oh, Keegan Murray, oh. University of Iowa. Yeah. He went number four overall. He will be playing for the Kings. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's head to our quick hits. Uh, Rob Gronkowski is retired again, kind of, maybe. I don't know if I believe him because his agent doesn't believe him. The only player he's going to play with is going to be Tom Brady and the Bucks. But legitimately... His agent said, I don't know that I believe him. I think this is just how to get, how to get out of minicamp by Rob Gronkowski. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that if the team, if the Bucks are struggling and they're not getting any production out of the tight end group, I think they could convince Gronk to come out of retirement. 
Hundred percent. Make a Super Bowl run. Hundred percent. But that's the only team he's going to play with. The one interesting thing that I found out about the, his retirement: the guy never spent any of his NFL salary, seventy million dollars in career earnings, never spent a dime of it. He lived off of his endorsement deals. Uh, I mean, it, there's so <laughs> something that something that people got to understand. The his endorsement deals aren't just like. His commercials, by the way. His endorsement deals, I would guess, also includes, hey, Gronk, we're opening this new bar at this at this at this hill or at this Hilton in Las Vegas. Come pour champagne on some some hot chicks and we'll pay you to be there. And you can stay here for a week. We don't care. Or taking the uh, the cruise. Yeah. For Gronkowski's party cruise. Yeah, it's it's that type stuff. Like, so, yeah. Um, and then finally, Arch Manning committed to Texas? Yeah, I guess he... Hook him horns? I mean, the guy met with his yeah. recruiting... I mean, we normally don't talk about college football that much, but, I mean, his recruitment was covered extensively. Yeah. A lot. I mean, he went to Alabama, Auburn. I mean, the one that the two schools that I was surprised with that didn't kind of make the rounds or make headlines that they recruited him was where his where his uncles went. Tennessee yeah. and Ole Miss. Yeah. I I don't know. I is it a big deal? He's got to prove himself first. That's the first thing you got to do. I don't. He could be a total bust in the NFL. Or in the in the college ranks. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's the top rated. They were saying that he was like the top rated college football player, but he's still not. You're probably not gonna. He's probably not gonna see the field for at least a year, maybe even two years before yeah. he's the uh, the quarterback in Texas. Yeah, it's it'll be interesting, but uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and um, so. Before we move on, sorry, um, I did look up the endorsement deals that Gronk supposed that had uh, Dunkin' Donuts, Visa, T-Mobile, Lyft, Cheerios, Monster Energy Drink, Tide, and of course his USAA commercials. Oh man, busted! <laughs> That's right, and he was also I mean he also made appearances with uh, Fox Sports during his year away from uh, his first retirement. He was a Fox Sports uh, studio analyst as well. Yeah. So it wouldn't surprise me to see him back in the back in the broadcasting game as well. If he decides that he wants to even do that. Guy's got enough money he doesn't necessarily need to do anything He's got else. $70 million in savings. Go party. Period. Keep, At least. Keep getting those endorsement deals. Plus endorsement deals. Okay. Rich, um, we want you people to be a part of our fantasy football. We're going to – we can't do any sign-ups yet. Yahoo won't let us, I believe, right? But uh, we're going to start – once it's available, once we're ready to do it, we're going to post some stuff, and you're going to – we want you guys to join us. Um, we're going to do a fantasy football uh, based around – our show it's going to be we'll do a we'll have a live draft you can be a part of it um and then uh and if you can't make it you can auto draft but uh yeah rich people are watching us here on facebook but they want to take us in their cars with us what should they do um Find us wherever you listen to all of your other podcasts. Just search Balls and Sticks, the podcast. Um, you'll know what's the right one because you'll see Mike and I in uh, tuxedos, looking like we're about ready to uh, step up to the plate uh, with baseball bats. Yeah, imaginary baseball bats. Yeah, imaginary baseball bats. Um, and uh, Mike, if they don't like, if they're not a big fan of Facebook, they don't really do the podcast thing, where else can they catch us? They can catch us on YouTube and uh just search for balls and sticks the podcast youtube.com slash balls and sticks 
Um, yeah. So all that being said, thanks for joining us, Rich. Rich, do you have any shout outs uh, for the show this week? Um, uh, I don't. Um, if you're local here in the Quad Cities and our uh, local sports fan, come out to the John Deere Classic this weekend. Um, I'll be out there on Wednesday, the opening day of the tournament. Um, not quite sure what the uh, what I'll be doing out there yet. I, I've heard that we'll have a if, so if you're a veteran, stop by the uh, Quad City uh, Merg table, and um, that's where you'll find me on Wednesday morning, and as well as uh, other coworkers of mine at John Deere that are also military veterans. Okay. Well, folks, uh, thanks for joining us this week. Uh, Rich, what should we do? Mike, let's go ahead and roll the outro. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa, this is Balls and Sticks, the podcast with your hosts, Mike and Rich.